the following topics as noted here they will be discussed by us of course the concept of rasa rasa swarup we will be discussing then the types of rasa various categories under rasa and types of bhava bhavas are connected with rasa and colors of rasas this is the later theorist do not talk about it i think only natya shastra and uh, barring one, one or two theorists normally they don't talk of the colors of rasa because bharat muni is writing a text for the performers so the performers have to be the performers should know what colors are related to which rasa so that uh, in their paraphernalia in their costuming they can put on and the costumes as per color prescribed by bharat muni for a particular rasa then rasa and purushartha i have already explained on several occasions i have been talking about the interconnections between rasa and purushartha the values of life in our conception so these uh, topics we will be discussing under bharata bharat muni's theory of rasa next the first stanza of uh, sixth chapter says purva rang vidhim shrutva having listened to the prescriptions of purva ranga they are in the fifth chapter we have already read so the whole discussion on purva ranga which precedes this sixth chapter and fifth chapter is purva ranga adhyaya so the muni said asked what sort of purva ranga you first performed and we want to learn about purva ranga so bharat muni explained purva ranga then the sages again asked bharat muni they said prashnan panch abhidhat suna second line says please reply to five queries by us prashnan panch abhidhat tell or describe so bharatam munaya sarve puna ahu all the munis who were listening to bharata with rapt attention they were very attentive and they were inquisitive also they were asking so they again presented five questions so when i was talking a kind of number of games and unity of numbers in natya shastra that there, there are so many categories having four number four pratis four pratis four types of heroes four mool rasas and this is a series that continues so there is a series of five which we will be coming on it when we discuss the theory of drama which is in 18th and 19th chapter so five avasthas five sandhis so many fives are there so in natya shastra the set of questions five set five questions they are asked repeatedly the number reaches five somehow so in the beginning also this sages presented five questions how natya veda was born for whom it was born and how many components does it have what are its authorities and how is it practiced these five questions munis asked in the middle also they had asked five questions and in sixth chapter they again asked five questions and in the end also in the last chapter there are five questions so this order is maintained the limit of number of questions one time is mostly five sometimes one or two questions are also there in between but mostly five questions they present so five 
the number five because it has some significance in Natya Shastra. So there, these are the five questions. They, these questions are about rasa. Ye rasa iti patyante. Second stanza says, ye rasa iti patyante, nati nati vichakshanai. Those which are called rasas in natya. Those which are called rasas in natya or theater by natya vichakshanas, by the experts of natya. So the experts of Natya talk about rasas. So what are these rasas? Rasattam ke navai tesham. So what are these rasas? This is the first question. Rasattam ke navai tesham. How they attain rasahud? Rasattva. How they attain rasattva or rasata? Rasata unme, rasata unme, rasattva unme kahaan se aata hai? How they become? How rasa becomes rasa? That is the question. This is the second question. Bhavash chaiva katham prokta. Kimvate bhavayantyapi. And what are the bhavas? Why bhavas are called bhavas? This is the third question. Kimvate bhavayantyapi. Do they lead to rasa? They, do they have the capacity of bhavan? Bhavan means capacity to make a sentiment experienced. Do they lead to bhavana or the experience? This is the fourth question. Last question is Sangraham Karikam Chaiva Niruktam Chaiva Tattvata. You tell us the Sangraha Karika Nirukta of this Rasa Shastra. So Sangraha Karika Nirukta, these are the terms related to the structure of a Shastric discourse. They are not directly related to Shastra. It's because the Munis are asking very significant questions related to Rasa. And they know that Rasa, discussion on Rasa will involve the whole theory. So they want to learn it, learn it very systematically in a Shastric way. So a Shastra has Sangraha, Karika and Nirukta. So you tell about rasa through sangraha, karika and nirukta by a systematic method methodology. This is the last. And the question will be what will be the sangraha, what, what are the karikas and what is the nirukta for rasa, for rasa theory. And what is sangraha, what is karika and what is nirukta? It is defined in the next stanza. Then there is a note here. It is in Sanskrit, but by me. Why they are asking about rasa? Because rasa has been discussed, referred. When the question is asked whether dance forms an integral part of uh, theater or what purpose dance serves in a theater, Bharat Muni explains the occasions where dance can be introduced. And lastly, he says that too much dance and too much music should not be there. Otherwise, the interest in rasa and bhava will be lost. These lines have occurred in the fifth. We have read it. We have read them in the fifth chapter, 159, Stranger. So, references to rasa and bhava have occurred in the earlier discussions. So, there is a continuity of thought process. Uh, the Munis learn some new technical term and they understand that it is very important. So, they then they become inquisitive about it. So, during the course of discussion with Nataraj Shiva, the importance of dance dance was realized, but it was also accepted that too much dance and too much music should not be there. Otherwise, there will be coherence. And, sorry, there will be incoherence. Spashtata will not be there. Clarity about Rasa and Bhava will be lost. 
So Rasa and Bhava, they are referred in the earlier discussions in the fifth chapter. Therefore, the question about Rasa and Bhava arises and the Munis pertinently ask that question. They present a five, present a set of five questions. And in this way, a sequence in the discussion is maintained. And therefore, Nati Shastra is termed as a Mahavakya or as unified discussion, meta discourse. Next. Fourth stanza says, Tesham tu vachanam shrutva muni nam bharato muni muni. Having lis listened to their vachana, vachan is utterances, that means their queries, the queries of the munis, muni nam of the munis, bharato muni pratyu acha. Bharat Muni replied about Rasa and Bhava. Then he, Bharat Muni, started his treatment about Rasa and Bhava. So he started telling them Prativaja Punarvakyam. He started, he replied through his descriptions, narrative about Rasa and Bhava, Rasbhavi Kalpanam, about uh, the interrelationships between Rasa and Bhava. Ahamva Kathai Shyami Nikhilena Tapodhana. Tapodhana is an address for these sages. O Tapaswins, O Tapodhanas, I will tell you holistically, Nikhilena, everything I will tell you about Rasa. And Sangra Karika Nirukta also, also I will tell about the theory of Rasa. This is the last line of fifth stanza, uh, second line of fifth stanza. And uh, the Tippani we will omit. Sixth stanza says, Bharat Muni says that uh, there is a need to discuss systematically and uh, briefly because the Rasa Shastra and the whole conceptual framework, the categories about it, they will lead to endless discussion because they are correlated to many things. Therefore, Bharat Muni says, Nashakya masya natyasya gantu mantam kathanchana. We cannot reach the end of natya. Natya is like an endless sea because it, inv it involves so many arts, skills, disciplines. So, it is like a Mahasagar. So, we will be applying the methodology of Shastra of putting the things in nutshell which is Sangraha and then defining the categories in a stanza that is Karika and, the, and defining the etymology of the categories that is Nirukta. These are the three methodologies in a Shastra. So these, this methodology of Sangraha, Karika and Nirukta brings out clarity in a Shastra. So otherwise we cannot reach the end of this great sea, which is Natya. Why it is endless? Kasmat, why? Bhautva jnananam shilpanam vapyanantataha. Because the jnanas, knowledge systems and shilpas skills which are involved in Natya, they are numerous. Ananta, they are innumerable. Uh, you can't count how many knowledge systems and how many skills uh, are incorporated. The performers only know that uh, when and where they will apply this skill, this sort of knowledge. So or the poets, the authors, they know. So there, there is no end to the number of knowledge systems and skills, arts, crafts, etc., which form a part of theater or natya. Therefore, we will proceed very systematically through Sangraha, Karika and Nirukta. And then, next, fifth one, he defines Sangraha. What is Sangraha? Go to fifth. Next, yes, <clears throat> ninth stanza, 
डिफाइन्स वाट इज संग्रह विस्तरे नोपदिष्टाना अर्थाना सूत्रभाष्यो निबंधो यो सामसेन संग्रह तम विदुर्बुधा बुधा दि कैटेगरी विच आर एक्सपोज इन डिटेल विस्तरेण उपदिष्टाना विस्तरेण इज इन डिटेल एंड अर्थाना दि थिंग्स और कैटेगरी विच आर एक्सपोज और एक्सप्लेन इन डिटेल थ्रू सूत्र एंड भाष्य पुटिंग इन नटशेल पुटिंग देम इन नटशेल निबंधो यह समासेन इट शुड बी यह तो पुटिंग देम ब्रीफली समास इज ब्रीफली संग्रह तम विदुर्बुदा दट इज कॉल्ड संग्रह दिस इज नाइन्थ स्टैंड Or the second line here. Then this tenth stanza we have repeatedly read. I have explained it several times. What is the sangra for natya? So putting in nutshell all the categories that will be the sangra for natya, and this sangra is presented in this shloka that is, that is tenth. That eleven categories are there. So in nutshell, the sangra for natya is formed by these eleven categories. So enumeration of these eleven categories is the sangra of natya. So ras bhav abhinay dharmi vritti pratyuti siddhi swarato dhigan and ranga. These eleven categories form the sangra of natya and the gamut, the samuh of these eleven categories. is natya sangrah so that is sangrah and uh, then karika he defines in the 11th stanza alpa vidhane narthoya samase nochyate budai sutrata sanu mantavya karika artha pradarshani in uh, nutshell or briefly some category is defined in a sutra style that is karika karika is in in one stanza and it is complete one sentence and sutra is even uh, shorter than karika this is the only difference between sutra and karika both sutra and karika they present some definition and uh, sutra should be very cryptic but very clear and it should have minimum number of words and uh, it may not form a complete sentence athato brahm jigyasa then you have to add some verb or from here onwards the brahm jigyasa is raised some verb brahm jigyasa bhavati or uh, brahm jigyasa uh, kriyate uh, the, the the prakaran of uh, brahm jigyasa the discussion on brahm jigyasa starts from here onwards but the sutra has only three words ath atah brahma jigyasa so in this way sutra is very cryptic and uh, it puts the category which is very significant and karika will expose that sutra in a sentence very briefly it will form one stanza or one shloka so natya shastra consists of karikas and sutras also and uh, sangrah is also there when the categories are put in nutshell or when the categories are just enumerated like in the 10th stanza like in the previous stanza so nat nat shastra as a shastra is structured through sutra karika and sangrah and these these are very simple things you must know about uh, the shastrik style of sanskrit text how shastras are these are three terms there are several other terms also in other shastras there are adikaranas and there puru paksha and uttar paksha so this involves a very scientific uh, structured discourse nat shastra simply takes up sangrah karika and nirukta and uh, after defining karika in the 11th stanza 12th stanza he says that uh, in 12th stanza he defines nirukta nana nama shayo petam nirukta has uh, nirukta takes recourse to several nouns it takes up several words listing of several words then how these words are formulated their etymology is discussed 
Nigantu and Nigam, these are the variants or types of etymology de defining uh, grammatical structure of a word, how that word is formed. Nati Shastra is formed, uh, sorry, Natya is formed uh, from the root nut and ad adding Nya Pratyay in the root nut. So adding Nya Pratyay in Nata, it becomes Natya. And there is a Panini Sutra, Chanda Gopti Ki Yagyik Bhavurach, Bhavurach, Bhavurach Nata Nya, that Nya Pratyay will be added in Nat. So the word Natya will be formed. So you have to tell the uh, root word, the original word. In Sanskrit grammar, it is called Pratipadika or Dhatu or Naam or Akhyata. So Naam or Noun in English you can say or root, that is verb. And uh, how that Noun or root added with some uh, suffix creates another word. So Nata and Ya joined together, they create this word Natya. This will be the Nirukta for Natya. But you also have to explain the meaning of nut and the why this, that suffix is added, in what in what sense that suffix is added. So that will make the complete nirukta for natya. So therefore in the second line it is said dhatvartha hetu sanyuktam. It should also give the meaning of dhatu and hetu reason for adding any suffix in it. So you, you have to name the root and why a suffix is added into it to denote what sense and by adding this and this, these two, this new word is coined or formed. And explanation of this genesis of the word or etymology as they call it. Yutpatti or Nirukta is another term for it in Sanskrit. And there is a text Nirukta by Yaska. It is the oldest text in linguistics in India. 7th century BC. It is a Vedic text. Text Yaska was a Vedic seer. And Nigantu he created and, and uh, Nirukta he created. Nigantu is the listing of nouns, verbs, uh, sorry, nouns and names. And uh, Nirukta is uh, explaining their etymology. So the science of language, this, this subject belongs to the science of language or linguistics. And linguistics is very much uh, a, a subject of concern for the studies of Natya Shastra. Nat Natya Shastra involves linguistics also and study of language also. So because it is taking up so many categories which, which need to be explained linguistically or etymologically also. And explaining them etymologically will be a part of the process of Nirukta. So Nirukta is also applied. So in this way, Sutra, Karika and Nirukta, Sangra, Karika and Nirukta, they are explained. So, okay, this we have covered. Go to the next. Now this you must learn very carefully. Even if you forget about the definitions of Sangra, Karika and Nirukta, because it is it has direct bearing on the whole thought process of Natya Shastra or, or on the whole theoretic framework of Natya Shastra. Rasa is the core of Natya Shastra. Rasa, you can say it is the most important element in all amongst all the categories. It is the Samam Bonam. It is the, in later Vedantic theory, they say Rasa is the Atman, soul of poetry, soul of Natya also. These such a philosophical categories, such philosophical terms Bharat Muni doesn't apply. He explains these things in, in a simple way. So these are the rasas and their thighs, their stable emotions. So these are the names. If you can remember the stenja, it is very good. Because stenjas are rhythmic and uh, we memorize them. Tangar hasya karuna rodhrvir bhayanaka vivas sadbhut sangya uchya tyashto nati rasasmrata vivas sadbhut sangya vivas sadbhut shantashya nati nava rasasmrata. This is the variant here. In some old manuscript, Viva Sadbhuta Shantascha Natya Navrasasmrata. The second line occurs in this way. Therefore, there was a tradition of holding nine rasas. And there was a tradition of holding eight rasas. Eight rasa theory and nine rasa theory. 
So these are the names. Either you remember the stanza or you remember the names. Shangar Hasya Karuna Rodravir Bhayanak Vibhat Sadbhut. When adding Shanta, it becomes nine. Otherwise, they are eight. And in the next stanza, there is Thai Bhavas. Thai Bhava is the enduring emotion, stable emotion that lasts last till the end with that rasa. It forms an invariable part of that rasa experience. It will accompany that rasa always. So if the, if the rasa is there, its sthai bhava would always be there. First the sthai bhava will be there, then the rasa will be generated on the experience side. On the side of the uh, audiences, the sthai bhava has to be presented. And then it will lead to rasa and rasa experience. So if you if you know rasa, you must know sthai bhavas are also. So each rasa has a stable emotion, you can say. It is difficult to give an exact English equivalent for all these terms. So normally rasa should not be translated. As I have perhaps earlier also spoken that there are different terms for translation of the term rasa. So aesthetic experience or taste or relish or various experience, sometimes delight, etc. But rasa being a unique experience, uh, we write, you know, and if you are writing some essay in English on rasa, use only RA essay and it is better not to give English equivalent. And for sthai bhavas also, it is better to write sthai bhavas, sthains or sthai bhavas. Uh, to explain, you can say stable emotion or enduring emo emotion connected to that rasa. So these are the eight sthai bhavas. Rati has krodh, rati has shok krodh utsah bhai, jagupsa vismaya. These are the eight sthai bhavas. And why? Bharat Muni has not taken up the issue why these are called only, these only are called the Sthai Bhavas. Why not the other Bhavas? Bhava means emotion. There are so many kinds of emotions. So why eight or nine are termed as Sthai or stable emotions? So Abhinav Gupta says that uh, every being carries them in his psyche as traces, samskaras. Everybody has the samskara of these sthai bhavas. Even if a child, the moment he is born, these sthai bhavas are within him. The tendency for love, he wants to love. He searches his mother. As soon as he is born, he cries for his mother. He wants to suck the mother, mother's milk. If that milk is not available, he will be crying in anger. And if he is happy, he will smile. He or she will smile. So this uh, love, mirth, that is joy and sorrow, growth is anger, utsah, inclination, bhai, dread, jugupsa, shuddering away from something and vismay, wonder. All these are the traces we call them samskaras in our terminology. So they remain inherent in the psyche of any animal. Even animals have them. So any being, any creature, you, you can say, will have the traces of these stable emotions the moment he is born. Only thing is that uh, when uh, slowly we become mature and we start recognizing them, we become, uh, we become aware of them, that I have love within me. I want to make love to somebody. I would love my mother, my brother, or I would love some young lady. So this awareness occurs later on, but uh, unawaringly, without being aware, these thai bhavas are there. About the other emotions, like chinta, that is worry, or shame. You cannot say that they are janmajat. They, they are with the 
human being the the moment he is born they may may maybe sometimes they may not be there they are not enduring they do not last till the end of the life so they come you are not worrying always but so in this in the form of a samskara also chinta glani asuya that is jealousy etc they are not there okay yeah, yeah. jugupsa is aversion you can say so all these are the stable emotion next okay you can read it read it quickly these are the english equivalent for all these eight rasa shangara you may call erotic it is uh, not a proper translation of course shangara is the sense of beauty also shangara means beautification so the whole aesthetic sense uh, the, to to make the life beautiful this is shangara of course the erotism forms a part of it hasya you, you can say the comic rasa karuna it should be an nakar is missing um, it is the pathos or pathetic rodra is the furious veera is the heroic bhayanaka is the dreadful which causes fear and vibhatsa is disgusting which causes aversion and adbhuta is the marvelous the rasa of wonder these are the eight rasas and if you add shanta then the tranquility or the feeling of peace peace also everybody wants to have peace so this is inherent with everybody then uh, these are the stable emotions in the next stanza rati is love has is mirth shoka is sorrow krodha is anger utsah is inclination utsah is translated in many ways utsah is uh, translated as zeal or enthusiasm but here it is better to say inclination for some good act Inclin inclination to improve our life to to make something good to do something good this is utsah so inclination and disinclination pravat pravritti and nivratti so nivratti is renunciation or shunning away from worldly things and inclination to make the world better that is utsah Bhaya is fear, Jugupsa is aversion, Vismaya is wonder. These are the eight sthai bhavas. Next, so you can better understand them. Those who understand English better, they can read from this. And this correlation between rasa and sthai bhava, you must remember always. Shangara for Shangara, the sthai bhava will be rati. For hasa, the sthaiva will be has. Hasa is comic rasa, and has has will be the sthaiva that is mirth. And karuna rasa will have the sthaiva shoka. Raudra rasa will have sthaiva krodha. Vir rasa utsa, bayana ka bay, vibhat sa jugupsa, adbhut vismay, shanta shama. Next. Vichari bhavas are thirty-three. So it it is good if you can remember the original names of Vichari bhavas. Otherwise, try to remember some four, five, six, seven, eight, ten Vichari bhavas. Our students remember thirty-three. They remember these original lines: Nirvada glani shankha kya stata suya madhushama arasyam chayiva deyanyam cha chinta moha smritir dhrti. So. From 18th to 20th, in three karikas, these are the karikas. The names are cited for the, and they are they found the sangra also for the vivichari bhavas. So these are the 33 uh, vivichari bhavas, and uh, the vivichara means uh, inconsistency, uh, applying sometimes and not applying. It 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 is not applicable always. so it it uh, is not so enduring as the sthai bhava and english equivalents also i have given so you can read this list of 33 vichari 
bhavas they are called transitory emotions and the difference between sthayi bhava and vyavichari bhava the difference between sthayi bhava and vyavichari bhava is that uh, sthayi bhavas form the waves of a great sea of rasa they are like waves so the waves are always there sometimes they are apparent and sometimes they merge in the sea and the vivichari bhavas are like bubbles they sometimes are formed and sometimes they disappear so they are they are they don't have that continuity so if water is there water uh, the waves are invariable parts of that water so with just a blow of wind the wave will arise so ha having some occasion for for the emergence of sthayi bhava that sthayi bhava will emerge if uh, your enemy comes for whom you have some hatred so anger krodh sthayi bhava will emerge in your heart if your beloved appears you are sitting peacefully in a tranquil state but your beloved appears so love will emerge so just as a gust of wind makes the waves appear in the same way the cause of sthayi bhava will make it manifest otherwise they are sunk below in the abyss of rasa but the vivicharins are they not invariable parts of this great sea of rasa so nirved is renunciation glani is debility shanka apprehension asuya is envy mada is intoxication shama is weariness alasya is indolence dernya is depression chinta is reflection moha is distraction delusion also you can say it is better said better to say delusion smriti is recollection 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 memory dhrati is equanimity dhrati is better say patience prida is shame and chapalata is unsteadiness harsha is joy avega is flurry jarta is stupefaction stupefaction garva is arrogance vishada is despondency asukya is longing nidra is drowsiness apasmara is dementedness and supta is dreaming virodha is awakening amarsha is impatient opposition a kind of enduring enmity which is called amarsha avahitta is uh, normally it is explained in sanskrit is akar gopan the desire to shrink from somebody to conceal yourself uh, it is uh, displayed by putting your palms on your face a lady uh, trying to shun away from somebody she does it so akar gopan agrata is fury mati is resolve uh, wisdom is also the term for mati it is better to say wisdom vyadhi is sickness unmada is madness maran is death trasa is terror and vitarka is doubt this is the gamut of 33 sthayi bhavas and you must remember the sutra the sutra i have been telling when we discuss the theorist they explain the rasa sutra that also occurs in natya shastra when he explains the nishpatti how rasa, rasa manifest then the sutra occurs there vibhavanu bhava vyavichari sanyogat rasa nishpatti by the combination of vibhav anubhav and vivichari bhava rasa is generated rasa manifest so bharat muni has explained rasas the number of rasas and their names sthayi bhavas and their names and the 33 vivichari bhavas and then he comes to satvika bhavas so these are the satvika bhavas 
stambh it is in the next go to the next yes 22nd stanza says stambha svedoth romancha swar vedoth vepathu vevarne mashru pralaya ityashtau satvika smrta these are the satvika bhavas stambha is fixity stupor also you can say sved is perspiration romancha is horrification your uh, hair of your small hair of your body they rage and during uh, the excitement during horror also so horripilation is the word for romancha horrification it is written here and uh, swarveda is perching of the throat so you can't speak clearly your voice breaks that is swarveda vepathu is vepathu is trembling vevarne is change of color your face is flush there is a flush in your face and ashru is tear pralay is loss of consciousness these are the eight satvika bhavas they are called satvikas because an actor has to go in in his satva or samadhi to feel them then to perform them because perspiration you can't perform unless you go into the samadhi and feel the perspiring person then perhaps you will be able to perform romancha also normally you can't show unless you enter into the bhumika of a character who is romanchit who is feeling this romancha then you can exhibit so these are for the actors and they are difficult to perform unless satvik abhinay is done and satvik abhinay is done through samadhi so tears they are they are they, they are not to be shown artificially in cinema movies the actor actor or actress put some chemical in his or her eyes and she can do the role of a person weeping shedding tears but in bharata system the tears should appear automatically if you have the feel of the character who is weeping therefore there are satvika bhavas perspiration romanch swarved vepathu vevarnya or the face being flushed or waver loss of color is there on the face so artificially change of color will not be shown if satvika bhava is being performed if some aharya abhinay is being done then the change of color uh, uh, can be shown in an artificial way but for satvik abhinay the change of color will be exhibited through satvik abhinay so these eight are displayed through satvik abhinay only therefore therefore they are they are prominently displayed through satvik abhinay only therefore they are called satvika bhavas other bhavas are also other bhavas also involve satvik abhinaya but uh, these eight solely depend on satvik abhinaya without satvik abhinaya you cannot dream you cannot imagine of performing these eight now going to the next part of of this slide we can see that uh, bharat muni has counted eight sthayi bhavas 33 vivachari bhavas and eight satvika bhavas so that may that makes uh, 41 plus 8 49 so total number of bhavas are 49 and this is the bhava samuha so all these bhavas these this gamut of 49 bhavas if they are created on stage then rasa will emerge eight rasas will emerge one of the eight rasas accompanied by other rasas 
no single rasa comes alone this also is the theory of bharatmani so a rasa may be there prominently but other rasas will be joining that rasa like hasya rasa joining shringar rasa like karun rasa joining rod rasa if rodra is there karuna will follow so normally in a performance or in a big poem a single rasa is not there a single rasa may be dominating but other rasas he will be leading to or other rasas will be accompanying that rasa so this is the gist of the rasa theory you must remember this 49 bhavas and these 49 bhavas put into practice in a poem or in a performance of a play they need they make rasa all the 49 are not always necessary for one rasa some bhavas are required some may not be required this is these options are there but all in all they are 49 next now the rasa swarupa according to bharatmani He says, Prasane Vatavat Adho Abhi Vyakya Syama. We will explain the rasas. What are rasas? Nahi rasad rite kashi dartha pravartate. Without rasa, nothing happens in Natya. This is a very significant sentence in Natya Shastra. The Bharatmani means to say that rasa is the B end and all end for Natya, for the whole. Natya process. Rasa is there in the beginning, in the middle and in the end. Without rasa, nothing will happen. Therefore, rasa must be understood. And this is the sutra. Vibhavanu bhava vivichari sanyogat rasa nishpatti hi. With the combination of vibhavas, anubhavas and sanchari bhavas, rasa is produced or rasa manifests. Nishpatti of rasa happens because of the combination of Vibhava, Anubhava, Sanchari, Bhavas. Vibhavas are the causes. Anubhavas are the incidents or after effects. And Sanchari, Bhavas, Vibhichari, Bhavas, we have explained. Bharatmani has explained this process of rasa realization through a simple examination of uh, a of, of a dish of preparing some item, food item of a recipe. Kodrashtanta. What is the example? Atraha. The example is given in this way by Bharatmani. Yathahi nana vyanjanaushadi dravya sanyoga trasa nishpattihi. Just as when we prepare a recipe or a dish, a tasty dish of some food item when we prepare, we mix several vyanjanas and oshadis. So some several ingredients and spices and other additions, additional items we mix to make it tasty. Tatha nana bhava pagamad rasa nishpatti. In the same way, mixing of various bhavas leads to rasa. Rasa in uh, our day-to-day -day life, when we enjoy some food, there also rasa is there. That is lokika rasa. There is worldly rasa, you can say. And those rasas are of six types. Katu, Amla, Madur, Tikta, Kashai, Lavan. These are the six rasas in food items. Katu is uh, when we, we taste some paper, we have a burning sensation. And uh, Amla, when we taste something sour, like lemon or unripe mango, that is amla, lavan is salty, kashai, the taste of uh, haldi, haridra, and uh, madhur is sweet. So th these are the six rasas in food items. And they are produced by mixture of various ingredients, various spices and herbs and uh, other things. In the same way, mixing of vibhavas, anubhavas, and sanchari bhavas makes rasa. Just as preparing a tasty dish, 
you make, you mix many things in the same way. On a stage or in a poem, the poet or the performer would mix vibhavas, anubhavas, and sanjana. Vibhavas, Anubhavas and Vibhichari Bhavas. So proper mixture of these Vibhavas, Anubhavas and Sanchari Bhavas will, would create Rasa. The last two lines only explain, uh, only say what I have already said. That just as by mixing Guda, some sweet element like sugar or Guda and uh, Venjana spices and uh, Oshadis, various herbs, etc. Chada is six types of rasas which I have named. Katu, Amla, Kashaya, Madhur, Tikta, Lavan. They are created in the same way. Mixing of various bhavas lead to rasa. Nana bhava upagata api sthayino bhava rasatvam apnu vanti. Next. Next is about the interrelationship of Sthai Bhava and Rasa. Bhavas and Rasa. So it is the interrelationship between Bhavas and Rasa. Parthmani says that if Bhavas are there, then Rasa will be there. And if Rasa is there, then Bhavas are following Rasa. 36 Stenja says, Na bhava hino stiraso na bhavo rasa varjita Raspar krita siddhis tayo rabhinaye bhavet. Without bhavas, there is no rasa. And without rasas, there is, there is, sorry. Without bhavas, there is no rasa. And without rasa, there is no bhava. This is the first line. Paraspar krita siddhi. This mutual functioning is there. They mutually accompany each other for the genesis of rasa in a performance. Abhinaye, in a performance, they cooperate mutually for rasa realization. Rest is simple. He is repeating the same example. Just as the combination of various spices, salt and pepper, and uh, haldi, etc., hing, etc., mix and other ingredients makes the makes a dish tasty in the same way. Bhavas and rasa they join together and makes make the whole experience a delight. And then the Pervasive nature of rasa is explained in the last two lines, 38th stanza. Yatha bijat bhavet vraksho vrakshat pushpam phalam yatha tatha mulam rasa sarve tebhyo bhava vivasthita. Just as from a seed, the whole tree is generated. And in that tree, there are flowers and fruits. In the same way, rasa lies in the whole performance, in the whole art discourse as a seed. And it is rasa that becomes flowers and fruits. And the fruits again have seeds, so that those seeds again carry the rasa. Therefore, he said that rasa is in the beginning and rasa is the end. Rasa is the be all and end all in theater or any poetry also. So, rasa is the origin. It lies at the very basis of the whole experience of Natya. And Bhavas depend on it and Bhavas lead to Rasa and Rasa then again leads to Bhavas. This is the mutual interdependence between them. This we will skip over. This I have repeatedly explained. There are four Mool Rasas and there are subsidiary Rasas or ancillary Rasa, Shangar, Raudra, Veera, and Vibhas, these are the Mool Rasas, and Hasya, Karuna, Adbhut, Vayanak, these are the subsidiary Rasas or ancillaries. Go to next. We will come to the colors of Rasas. 
these are simple and uh, these are the notions which are relevant to time and region uh, in some time in some region in some country a particular color color is associated with some sentiment in other countries in other times it may not be associated in bharata's system this was the common belief shyamo bhavati shangara the shangara the color of shangara is shyama sito hasya prakirtita the color of hasya is sita sita is white kapota karuna shchaiva color of karuna rasa is kapota kapot is pigeon kabutar in hindi we say so color of the kapota or pigeon and rakto rodra prakirtita rodrasa has red color gaurav virast vigeya virras has gaura gaura is fair and uh, krishna shchaiva bhayanaka bhayanak bhayanak ras has black color neel varnas to be bhatsa vibhatsara says blue neela vitas chaiva adbhuta smruta adbhutras is related to yellow or peat color okay the translation is there okay. and it is simple thing only thing is that uh, the shyama is difficult to explain otherwise shyama is very beautiful color otherwise the color of rama and krishna all the great heroines they have the shyama color draupadi was shyama but she was the most beautiful lady of mahabharata period no lady as beautiful as draupadi draupadi was shyama the shyama was shyama color was uh, something extraordinarily uh, indicates something extraordinarily beautiful and it is not black it is not actually green also the green is translated many times but the green is uh, something different the crops are green grass is green so it is not green like that so some people appear very beautiful they are not very fair they are not black also but they look very beautiful that that perhaps is the shyama word and in, i don't have any term for it in english the shyama is shyama like krishna like rama they are shyama varna rest is uh, not so complicated we can skip over it okay and as i said these are they are related to time and space these are the notions sometimes red color is associated with love now but red is uh, the color of blood violence so it is better to associate it with the wars fights violence and rodra rasa and uh, this this help us in creating the atmosphere in performance light effects will be in accordance with it in accordance with the rasa scheme related to their colors or the costumes will be according to that so it is for the performers it is helpful then this is also important the next one is deities for rasas or the gods this also we can read quickly shangaro vishnu devatyo hasya pramath devata raudra rudradi devatya karuno yam devata shangara has vishnu as its deity hasya has its deities uh, as pramatha pramatha is one deity and uh, sometimes yeah attendants plural perhaps is not uh, proper pramath was one chief uh, gana of shiva he is the he, he was like vidushaka he was uh, entertaining shiva and parvati therefore he is the deity of or the god of hasiras and rodra rudra di devatya the deity for rodra rasa is rudra rudra is a vedic deity and here in natya shastra rudra and shiva are different and rudra shiva and mahakala and kala they are also different here in puranic mythology they are merged mostly they are merged at least rudra and shiva they have merged together so natya shastra represents a period of transition when rudra was becoming shiva 
in agam tradition or puranic tradition but still there was a consciousness of separation that in vedas rudra is there and he is being recreated as shiva in this period so this uh, rudra is the deity for rudra and uh, yama is the deity for karundasa because karundasa happens when there is some death calamity and death after death you go to yamloka yama is the presiding deity there so yama is the deity or god of karundasa vibhasasya mahakala the deity of vibhasa is mahakala and mahakala leads finally to salvation therefore vibhasaras is connected to salvation nirvana or moksha and uh, bhayanak has it it's a kal kal here is time and mahakal is different from kala here it is akhand kala you can say in separate